Today we're going to check out a board that probably no one has heard of and this is the Drevo Gram R84 but it also has the name Calibre on the back. The box is simple with a bit of branding and no information on features and such but it does show what version it is and what switch it comes in although on their website they don't have a white version of the board. Opening up the box we have the keyboard with a cover on it which is a really good inclusion if you want to keep that for dust protection later on. Then we have the keyboard wrapped in plastic, a guide, and two of these weird stickers. It also came with a plastic ring keycap puller, but I lost that before. So the first thing that you'll probably notice is that it's quite a small and compact keyboard. This is because it's a 75% mechanical keyboard, so it's probably the main point between the 60% boards and the 10 keyless boards. Although what I love about 75% keyboards is that they pack a lot of primary functionality in a really small footprint. So for example, a 60% board has 61 keys and a 10 keyless keyboard has 87 keys. However, this has 84 keys but is only slightly larger than a 60% board but a considerable amount smaller than a 10 keyless board. So there are two main layouts for 75% boards. There's this one with the 84 keys and there is the 82 key layout. The main difference is that the 84 key version uses more standard sizes for keycaps whereas the 82 key layout has a few oddball sizes with the escape, backspace and the arrow keys and such. However, both layouts will be tough to deck out with aftermarket keycaps, but they are available, but they're just less common to find. Although this Drevo 84 will be easy if you don't mind some blank keycaps. With this 75% design, there's no gaps between the clusters of keys, which in my opinion is a really great look and it complements that basic unassuming design of this keyboard. It's mainly black with a satin, slightly textured black plastic top shell, or rather edge shell. The shell is also quite rounded in the corners, which is a bit more than usual. With the plastic shell, it's not a floating key design like with many other compact keyboards, but it also does add a little bit of weight and heft to it, which in my opinion makes the typing experience a touch better. This is a backlit keyboard, which is always a welcome addition. And I'm very happy to see that this has singular white backlighting, which is something many cheap boards tend to ignore and go with multiple colors like a fixed rainbow. There's a few lighting modes which are again cool but in reality aren't very useful and the brightnesses can be adjusted by the directional arrow keys. Although a cool thing about this board is that you can set custom lighting profiles, but yeah everything is explained with this guide paper. However, they are shining through some keycaps with a not so great typeface or font. This is an unfortunate feature that is very common on cheaper boards and really no one likes these edgy typefaces so I don't know why they keep using these. The keycaps overall however are quite nice, they're ABS keycaps with a rougher than usual texture but the cool thing is is that they are double shot so the legends won't ever fade away or get damaged since it's a different piece of plastic for the legend. The keycap however is quite thin. Since it's a compact keyboard, to make up for it there are a couple of secondary functions which are shown with the blue legends on the front side of the keycaps and these are all accessed via the function key. So we actually have a whole number pad embedded just to the right of the middle. It's of course staggered rather than gridded but it's quite easy to get used to. At the top there's also a bunch of media control keys but they are somewhat difficult to see because of the heights and profiles of the keycaps. So for the most part, only half of the symbol is seen, but this just depends on how high you sit relative to the keyboard. Turning the board over, we have the non-removable braided USB cable, which is this red and black braid, which may not match what you're going with, so perhaps a more neutral one would have been better. There's also this little plastic insert which secures the cable a bit better, which is quite nice. Although it's just a friction fit piece, so it has actually fallen off when moving it around. And to add to that, there's the cable routing channels. There's also four rubber feet for non-slip and two flip-up feet, which are also rubber tipped. And now the switches. As you can suspect, these are the ever-growing Altimus switches and is the blue variety. 
These are the go-to for all these cheap Chinese boards, but essentially our Altimu switches mimic their Cherry MX counterparts. So this blue switch is clicky, but are a touch heavier and clickier in my experience. However, others seem to have differing experiences, which can probably be put down to the looser tolerances and quality. Being clones, however, you can replace the keycaps and replace the key switches with whatever other Cherry clone switch you want, since these all have the same stem. And here's a quick sound test. Okay, now to check out the insides. Usually there's screws under the rubber feet or the sticker, but it's actually held in solely by small tabs, which are very easy to release with a small flathead screwdriver. So it has the standard three parts. We have a plastic top shell, which hardly has any structural rigidity to it. So it's a tad twisted when not fitted on, but that's not a problem at all when it's on. Then we have the switches that are mounted onto the metal backplate, which is connected to the PCB. Nothing much a note on the PCB besides that it's a cool red, although we do have the diodes on there, so the keyboard does feature N-key rollover. And finally we have the bottom shell and the cable. The cable can't be removed unless you remove the end of it, so if you wanted to paint it or something, then you'd have to do so. And this is pretty interesting since it has key cool branding on it. I haven't had first-hand experience with a KeyCool 84 keyboard, but it does seem that Drevo is just using their shell for their keyboard. Perhaps even the PCB is the same, because the keycaps also feature the same front-side printing for the secondary functions, so it may be a rebranded KeyCool 84 but with Altimu switches, but I'm not so sure on that. The stabilizers used are cherry-style stabs, which makes it super easy to remove keycaps, Although, a cool thing that they did with this is that they put a cover over what is usually a gap. This is particularly useful for blocking off debris that can get stuck under there over time. So overall, it's kind of a mixed bag, but a good one. It does feature the Altimu switches, which feel absolutely fine and will always give you that mechanical experience. However, they are seen to be a touch poorer in quality and a bit more inconsistent. Also, the typeface on the otherwise not too bad double shot keycaps isn't great, and I know majority of people dislike these edgy fonts. However, the overall build is solid. Floating key designs tend to have aluminium plates, however, since this one has a plastic top shell and is not a floating key design, it features a steel backplate which adds a bit more heft to it, which helps the typing experience in my opinion. The 75% layout is a good balance, especially for those who can't make that jump to the 60% boards and just can't get rid of their dedicated directional arrow keys and function row. It's honestly pretty much a 10 keyless keyboard, but much, much smaller. And finally, it gladfully has white LEDs, which pretty much fit with any setup. But I guess the biggest plus is that it's only about 40 USD from China and 50 something on their website at the time of this video. With really the only negatives being the font and the key switches depending on how you look at it. So I definitely recommend this as a potential starter board or a budget friendly board.